So there's a lot more people getting interested in making games every year and you guys were actually suggesting me to make a video where I give tips to people who are just getting started and that even intermediate people can still apply. So in this video, I've gathered five of my crucial and most important tips for game developers and I'm going to share them with you all. The tips that I'm going to share are not going to be limited to certain topics but they are going to include how to make more money off of your games, how to use funding platforms correctly and stuff like like that. Now just keep in mind that these are going to be my personal tips and they are not necessarily any rules of game development world or anything like that, right? So what this means is that this video is more of like a discussion type of video where I basically contribute by sharing my thoughts with you all and then I want you guys to contribute too by commenting your tips in the comment section below. Additionally, after watching the video, I would also suggest you all to join our Discord server with over 10,000 game developers in there so who you can talk to, share insights and learn more about their projects and stuff like that. So it's a very like-minded type of community and I would suggest you to join so go to the link in the description if you guys want to go. And before we get into the video, just a quick mention that this video is brought to you by Root Motion. Root Motion is a company dedicated to the research and development of advanced character animation systems. And one of their top performing assets right now is called Final IK. Now Final IK is the leading inverse kinematics library for Unity containing over 15 different types of IK solvers and solutions. Its main features include full body biped IK, support for VR, Grounder which is an automatic vertical foot placement and alignment system, aiming, interactions, rotations and so much more. To see more about Root Motion and Final IK, please see the link in the description, which is going to lead you to their asset store page. And now, returning to the topic of this video, here are my five tips on how you should proceed with making games. Number one, starting out with big projects. So this is a huge topic, I feel like, because a lot of people are probably going to be able to relate to this. So. Normally, when you're getting started with game development, it's very attractive, sort of, to get started with the biggest projects in your library. Because one thing you're going to do when you're getting started with game development is probably going to be flowing, overflowing actually, with ideas. You're going to be like, yeah, I want to create this game, but then you're going to start with it and be like, yeah, I want to create this game actually. And then you're in the midst of that development process and you're like, well, I just want to make like a GTA 5 in Unity and it's never going to stop. And that's, I feel like that's like one of the problems, one of the main problems that makes people a little insecure about themselves when they get started with game development because they feel like they, they think in their minds, they think they are the problem as in terms of like what they should work on and not being able to decide on a project, which I can admit it might be related to that. But the main issue that I see here, which also helped me um, when I was getting started to just acknowledge this fact is the fact that when you're just getting started, when you're just getting used to a game engine or like how to work on a big project or something like that, right? You should always take small baby steps and just go into the right direction with small steps. I don't feel like you have to rush because you, if you have a big project in your mind that you really do want to work on, whether or not it's with a team or if you're alone or, you know, solo, whatever it might be. If you have a big project like that, just keep it in the back of your mind for a little bit until you feel comfortable enough to use the game engine you pick to go with. So for instance, I'm using Unity, I'm a Unity user, and when I was taking my first steps into game development, I was I did have my big projects in mind that I really wanted to work on and I successfully worked on some of those. Some are still, you know, in a notepad um, or somewhere on my computer or somewhere in a drive document. But my point is I didn't take them as a main priority, which resulted in me gaining more experience, gaining more, you know, knowledge and improving myself with programming, improving myself with level design and stuff like that, which is also why I threw myself onto YouTube and successfully built something here. Um, I'm not going to say a career, but a platform which I can use to speak, which I can use to teach game development, and it kind of took over my life at this point. So you can actually call it a career because it's literally taken over my life at this point. But my point is, don't rush your big projects. Start out a little bit small. Feel free to take your time because you have no reason to rush with a big project. And if you go with a big project, 
trust me, it's never gonna end. Your ideas are gonna keep flowing and you're just gonna like feel insecure at the end of the day because you're not gonna be able to decide which project you should build first. And I'm not gonna keep talking about this topic way too much because I could literally go on for days. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask in our Discord server or in the comment section below this video. Cause we obviously like not just me, but we as a community wanna help you out and we wanna kickstart your project or you know, any way we can help, let us know. Um, but and if you have any specific questions to me feel free to comment still and I will reply to you So I'm just quickly gonna hop on to tip number two Which is about using funding platforms like patreon now This is an interesting topic because not a lot of people have realized this at this point like from what as far as I can see right but the way I see how funding platforms work and the way people interpret that as game developers or as even like small youtubers is some people think that a funding platform like Patreon, for example, is a platform where they can start the marketing campaign for their projects, which is not true because Patreon, yes, you might be able to, if you're making a game and you create a Patreon page for your game, yes, you could technically add some information, some valuable, you know, info about your game or any kind of like dev insight of some sort, you know what I mean? But I've also seen a lot of game developers recently starting to use Patreon and trying to use it as a as a marketing platform, which is not meant to be, you know, like Patreon is supposed to be the funding platform so you can monetize your work and your progress of development or your progress of making video content on YouTube or you know, Twitch streaming, whatever it might be, right? Whatever the purpose might be, whatever you're working on. Um, but it's not supposed to be used as, oh, look at my Patreon page because you're gonna see a lot of information there. Like, I, if I'm checking out a game of someone, like if someone is making a game and I decide to check it out, I don't wanna check it out on Patreon. Cause that, I know that Patreon is being used for monetization purposes mainly. So I know that the Patreon page of that game is mainly going to be, hey, support me so that you get access to this. But I don't want that. You know what I mean? I don't want to hear about what I'm going to get in return of supporting you. I want to hear what your game is about. I want to see a trailer. I want to see screenshots. And then if I decide that your game looks good enough for me to start funding it, I can go to your Patreon page, but not before. So now you might be asking yourself, well, if I'm not supposed to use Patreon as a marketing platform, what am I supposed to do to get more sales? And that's where number th tip number three comes in, right? So I'm just trying to like transition. <laughs> so tip number three, most important step to get sales, in my opinion, is by growing a fan base. And how do you grow a fan base? And what is a fan base? And what do I mean by that? So. First and foremost, by a f by saying that you should grow a fan base, I'm not saying that you should have millions of subscribers on YouTube or millions of followers on Twitter or anything like that, right? Those are crazy numbers. It's possible, but it's not rational. So what I'm saying is you should have a, even if you have a hundred people who are very, very, very into your game, into your project, into your YouTube channel, whatever it might be, right? Even if it's only a hundred people, we say only a hundred people, but that also guarantees you at least like 70 people who are gonna buy any of your products that you release, not just now, but also in the future. And I also wanna clarify a little bit my point here. Um, I'm not saying that if you have a hundred followers on Twitter or YouTube or even like all these social media platforms combined together, it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed gonna have 70 customers who buy any of your products, any of your company's services, right? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you promote your game and focus on growing your fan base, and I'm just like underlining growing here, um, if you keep on growing your fan base and be consistent, which is the key word here, I feel like it's going to allow you for more success and guaranteed success or guaranteed chance of success upon release of your projects. And I feel like that's a very important part of your, which is going to be a very important pillar in terms of marketing your game and upon release, how many sales you get. Because if you're on YouTube and you post a lot of trailers and you post a lot of gameplay footage or, you know, whatever it might be, community posts, literally everything you can imagine doing on YouTube, people will have a reason, a purpose 
behind the excuse of following you because otherwise it's just going to be like well why am i supposed to follow this guy if he doesn't really post a lot about his game which i'm mainly interested in and also even if people follow you just for the sake of subscribing on youtube because they don't really mind doing it they will see that you're consistent because youtube is going to recommend them to watch your videos if they watch one of them, right? If they watch one video and they subscribe, YouTube is gonna be like, aha, uh -huh, look at that, this guy's interested in this game or whatever, you know, videos, content, um, the context you're showing on your channel, and it's going to promote that video probably for the person that is already subscribed. So that might also turn into a potential customer. And I'm not only saying this about YouTube, but I'm saying literally in general, um, especially YouTube, but in general, if you create this kind of online presence and sh social presence with people who might turn into becoming customers later on, you will win. And tip number four, be careful of how you promote your game. So we have talked a lot about marketing and promoting your game on social media and YouTube, but it's also very important how you promote it because we have, I have, okay, let me say this, uh, disclosure, <laughs> big disclosure. I appreciate every single buddy who posts something on our Discord and, you know, doing all these crazy stuff and showcasing their projects and stuff like that. But I've also seen, or we have also seen as a community that there's a lot of people who think that their projects are literally the best ever to be created. They're like, oh my God, we're gonna literally make 2 million bucks in two years or next year, next month, right? Um, no, I'm obviously joking a little bit, but we're gonna make a million bucks next year. And do you wanna be a part of it? Do you wanna have a revenue share of 15%? And it's like, no, don't do that. Uh, don't be that kind of guy. I'm just saying, if you're doing it right now, stop. <laughs> if you're about to type that post in our Discord, stop. Um, no disrespect, honestly, I'm not trying to do that, but it's it's a very big mistake that's what i'm trying to like point out here it's a very 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 big mistake because it's a it's an instant turn off for people who are just starting to look at your game like imagine it this way if you were to look at a random indie game that somebody works on you have no clue who this person is and somehow this person manages to invite you to their team and goes oh by the way um, I don't have any marketing tactics in place. I ha I don't even have a YouTube channel for the game. I don't have anybody playing it right now. It's I literally just started yesterday, but I promise you next year we're gonna have a million dollars in the bank. Is that, I mean, is that really rational? <laughs> is that really like a realistic goal to have? No, it's not. So promote your game, but be very careful with how you promote it because just just imagine I know that your project is very delicate and very, it's a thin ice for you because it's your baby and whatnot, but be careful of how you promote it because people don't view your project the same way you do at first. You need to make sure they do view it from the same perspective as you, and that's what I call true marketing. That's how you win over people so that they go, oh, this is the best game ever. But if you tell them that it's the best game ever, it's just going to come across as arrogant, as ignorant, and not just as a lie, right? Because it's not there yet and you're calling it the best game and it's gonna be like, well, it's not really the best game. So just be careful. <laughs> and finally, number five, tip number five, don't force yourself to work from home all the time. Now, I know I'm gonna get a lot of people like, oh my God, I wish I could work from home and have the luxury as you. It's not a luxury, trust me, it's really not. I mean, let's say this. It's a luxury for the first couple of months and then after the first couple of months you're like yeah let me just like hire like you you start looking at office prices <laughs> you're like can i just go somewhere and like work from there um but what i'm saying is when you work from home all the time as a game developer especially as a game developer it becomes more of i wake up on my bed go to my computer, which is literally half a meter across. And from there, I eat lunch, I do all my work, I work on the game, I work more and more and more. And then I go to back to my bed, sleep the night, and then I repeat it. And after a couple months of doing this as a routine, you're gonna realize it's not much more of a routine than actually having to go to an office, which I know sounds like, oh, having to go because you feel forced, right? 
um, but it's also a luxury because you get to socialize with people, you get to see other people um, doing their work, and it might even inspire you and stuff like that. So, and honestly, this is like one of the things that a lot of I'm actually not gonna say a lot of people, but ev nobody understands this point better than people who actually work remote from home right now. Like I've been talking to a lot of people from Unity, I've been talking to a lot of game developers, some other YouTubers, um, heard this so many times, don't work from home. It's like a big golden rule for those people. And trust me, it's, I mean, I'm gonna admit, it's a big luxury the first couple of months, but after a while it gets really tiring. And the worst part of it, in my opinion, is the fact that your health just goes down the drain. Like literally it just goes down the drain right away, flies out the window, um, and it's it's really bad. After, after doing it for half a year, I realized that my health was not good, I was not in a good mood all the time, and it, it just, and I'm the type of person who's very outgoing too, so I really need people, and I was like, yeah, I need to like, you know, put an end to this, or at least have a very drastic change where I move out of my house. I need to go somewhere else, even if it's just a cafe, even if it's just the local library across your house, it helps. Just going out and walking there, <laughs> not taking a bus, it helps. It truly does. So make sure you have a very nice working environment. You can feel free to work from home sometimes, but don't do it all the time. It's really in the long run. It's not it's not a beneficial thing. All right. So hopefully that should give you five solid tips on how to get started with game development and what you should focus on as much as what you shouldn't focus on. And obviously, once again, if you have any questions or want to add your own tips, please do leave a comment on this video and make sure to join us on Discord by going to the link in the description or simply going to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm and join a community with more than 10,000 game developers in it right now. We love helping each other out, so I guarantee that you will feel a warm welcome once you join and ask your questions or check out some other people's projects or maybe even share your own projects. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit that subscribe button below the video to stay up to tune for new videos. And before ending the video, I would also like to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon, Richard Stance, Cupola, Flu Joey, Beard or Die, MakeyGame.com, Couch Ferret, Glassville Entertainment, Academy of Games.com, Terrorift.com, and John Funnel Grid. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make more videos. And for those of you who are new to the channel, first and foremost, welcome and hope you enjoy your time. And if you guys keep enjoying the content and feel like you want to support me, feel free to check out my Patreon page linked in the description. All right, so I'm going to end this video here without wasting more of your time, but I will be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So I hope to see you guys in both places. So thanks for watching and have a good night. Peace out, guys. History.